As an introduction to Juik and Hera, we are going to rig and animate this guy, see the whole process from the rigging to the animation. So let's start by importing the file in After Effects. It's an Illustrator file with all its layers. And I'm opening this composition. Here are all the layers in my timeline. The first step is to create an armature to the character, uh, its bones, all the bones of the character. So in Duik, I'm going to create the armature with the OCO panel, the first tab, which contains meta rigs. And in the hominoid section, I can choose the simple human. You can hide overlays with Shift Ctrl H to speed up the process. And the armature has been created. These are all the bones I need. I can show again the, the handles with Shift Ctrl H. And now I would have to move the bones to locate the anchor points uh, to the joints of the character. But on this character, everything is already at its right place, except the tip of the limbs, because the character was created to be used with this meta rig, this specific meta rig. I'm just moving the tip of the hands and the feet to adjust them to the design. And only these four layers needs to be moved. And now the armature is ready to be ripped. The next step is to parent all the artwork layers to the corresponding bone. We could simply pick the layers and parent them to the corresponding bone, for example here, the neck to the bone of the neck. There's a new tool in this version of Tuic to do that automatically. It is in the bone panel, the link art button. This tool automatically parents all layers in a single click. Either it's going to use the distance between the layer and the corresponding bone, or the name of the layer. In this case, we've not moved the anchor points of the layers, but they are correctly named, so we're going to use the name of the layers. Let's just lock the layers which won't have to be parented, the title, the foreground, and the background. And without any selection, Duik is going to parent everything for me. So I just have to click on the button. Everything has been automatically renamed and automatically parented, except the neck, as it already had a parent. So if I unparent it and click again on the button, this layer is parented too automatically. I can check the parenting by just rotating the bones to make sure everything follows the right bones. Now that everything is parented and all the bones are ready, I can just select them all and click on the auto rig button to let Duik do the job. The process can be a bit long, takes a minute or two, but just wait a bit and Duik will do the work for you. And here it is. The rake is ready. We can clean a bit the composition, for example, by hiding the bones. And for this, I'm going to use another script, which is called Duger, like Duduf Groups, available on rxlaboratory.org. It's free, like Duik. And with this script, Duger, I can select the bone groups to hide them all, maybe set them to shy mode, and lock them all. Now I can just activate the shy mode on the composition and I have just the, the artwork and the controllers available in the comp. Everything else uh, has been hidden. To make this easier to animate, we are going to adjust a bit the controllers to make this easier to manipulate. For example, here, I prefer to not have the controller above the design. So in the effect of the controller layer, I can just move the position of the icon, change it to move the controller outside of the character. This will be easier to select, and this way you can actually see the character. It's not hidden by the controllers. Let's move a bit the torso. Here it's nice. We can also move the body controller icon outside of the character. Same for the hands. I can just move a bit the icon on the side of the arms. 
And maybe I can just also change their orientation to align them to the hand. And finally, let's move the icon of the neck and the head. Okay, this is much better and easier to select and animate. You can test the controllers by moving them and also rotating them. And don't forget to check in the effects of the layers. There are a lot of options, parameters and stuff to animate each part, each detail of the limbs. Now the character is ready to be animated. Let's save this project and name this rig. My advice is to always keep the rig without any keyframes, without anything, and be able to adjust the character even if you've started the animation in another project. We're now ready to animate the character, but before that, either I start from an empty project to import the rig, or I save the project under with a new name like animation, for example, or walk, or anything you want. This way, I'm sure I keep the rig without any keyframes. To animate, a handy way to do that is to pick the character and put it in a new composition, which may contain the background or props or anything. And to be able to animate the character, I'm going to extract the controllers, which simplifies the timeline and improves the performance of After Effects. In the Duke panel, uh, on the fourth tab, I'm going to use the Extract tool. You can extract using Essential Properties or Expressions. Using Essential Properties is handier if you're going to animate uh, several shots in the same project, if you have several animations with the same rig, but it lags a lot. Using Expressions is better for the performance, but if you use Expressions, you can do only one animation per project. To do multiple animations, you need to create a new project for each animation. I'm going to use expressions here to improve performance. So with my precomp selected, I can just click on Extract to let you extract all the controllers from the precomposition. And now in my composition, I have a few locators, uh, layers Tuic needs to compute the, the coordinates of the layers. Let's just keep this hidden and locked the precomposition with the character and all the controllers above it. If I move the precompositions or change its scale, the controllers comes with it. And I can even flip the character with a negative scale so that I can move and put the character anywhere I wish and still be able to animate it using the controllers which have been extracted. Let's just undo that and I'm ready to animate this character. Everything is linked. All limbs are animated inside the precomposition. And finally, to finish this introduction to Duik and Hela, let's apply a walk cycle and a run cycle on this character. I'm just going to put the character in a neutral pose, which means I'm moving the arms along the body, not perfectly straight, but like this. And make sure the center of gravity of the character is right be between the two feet uh, with the legs a, a little bit bent. And maybe let's just rotate a bit the neck. So I have this neutral pose. Now I can just select all the controllers and go in the automation panel of Duik, the fifth, and click on the walk and run cycle button. So make sure you have selected the controllers and click on this button so that Duik automatically animates your character. A controller has been created in the center of the count with all the parameters of the cycle. Let's move this away and hide all the controller layers so I can clearly see the animation. And even like this, without changing any setting, I have a nice walk cycle. Of course, I can customize this 
in the settings of the controller. And the first thing I'm going to check is the duration of the cycle so that I can set a perfect loop on the composition. I can find the duration of the cycle in the computation part of the effects where you'll find the cycle duration in frames and seconds. So Dewey tells me this is a 24 frames cycle. So I can go to the 23rd frame to put the out point of the work area so that my work area goes from 0 to the 23rd image. And now I have a perfect loop. And I can easily adjust the walk cycle and all the settings to customize the way the character walks. For example, I can, in the character settings, change its energy, for example, and maybe make him a bit more energetic and raise the softness. And by customizing all the settings like this, I can have a custom walk cycle with a lot of settings, from general settings to very detailed settings for each limb. You can also, at any time, select the controllers to move them and adjust them to change or animate, even animate, the limbs above the walk cycle. For example, here, here with the arms. Um, be careful, because the walk cycle deactivates the IK on the arms. So you'll need to use the FK angles to control the arms and not the position of the controller. So the FK is in the effect. It's these three angles in the effect of the IK to control each part of the limb. Be careful because Dewey creates a few keyframes on this FK um, when you create the wave tackle, which you can just remove. You don't really need these, these keyframes. Dewey creates them because it needs them to switch the IK to FK, but you can just remove these keyframes. And now I can use these FK values to adjust the shape of the arms, just like this to really control the, the pose of the character as he's walking. For example, this right arm goes a bit too much on the back, so I can just rotate this a little bit and change the way the arm moves. Same for the left arm. Let's bring it back a little bit like this. And using all these controllers, moving them and adjusting the settings of the walk cycle, you can really customize the, the work cycle according to your character and what you need and the characterization. For example, here I'd like a little bit more amplitude for the step. Be careful when you rise the amplitude, the legs are a bit too straight. Uh, it pulls the straight, so it pulls the legs. So you may just move a little bit the body controller and <coughs> move it down a little bit. So you won't pull too much on the legs so that they're not too straight. Just like this. Here I can also maybe move a little bit the body control forward to adjust the pose of the character. Nice. So you can also really easily go from a walk cycle to a run cycle. Let's make the work area a bit longer so I can animate the transition. And a couple of seconds after the beginning of the comp, I can just in the settings of the walk cycle, animate the walk property and the run property so that I go from 100% walking to 0% walking and 100% running. This transition can take about a second, the duration of one loop. And now my character automatically goes from walking to running. You can also, of course, animate other parameters during this transition. For example, if I want to rise the energy when it begins to run, I can just add a few keyframes like this and modify any parameter during the cycle. I can also maybe animate uh, the controllers to adjust, for example, the arms during the run cycle. So let's just add a few keyframes on the FK angles of the arms. Just before the transition, 
And after the transition, I can adjust these angles, the position of the arms, and maybe bring them back a little bit. Same for the right arm here. Rotate, especially the forearms, which go a lot too high. So this is how with Tuic you can go from rigging to walk and run cycle in just a few minutes of work. If you'd like to go into more details and learn everything about Duik, you can follow the official and comprehensive video course about Duik and Hera, which is available on rxlaboratory.org. The link is in the description of the video. Buying this course is also a nice way to support us and support the development of free software like Duik. Thank you very much for your support and donations.